What's up, brother? In this video, I'm going to teach you the six steps that every single man should know so that he can improve at just about anything. And not just improve, become an expert, become top 1%, become the best at their trade or whatever it is that they want to accomplish. Now to give a little bit of context on why I'm recording this video, over the last week or so, I have made a concerted and deliberate effort to try to improve my presence on YouTube and try to build our business and our community over on this platform. And the way that I chose to do that was by making the commitment to record daily videos. Today is day five or day six and it is now 11.34 p.m. I have not posted my video. Well, here I am, fulfilling that commitment that I made to myself so that I could accomplish the goal that I set to achieve. Now, some of you guys may be thinking, wow, it's just one video, it's just one day, it's not that big of a deal. Most people probably wouldn't have noticed the list goes on, and you're probably right. But here's the thing, and this is what I've talked about all week in our messages, in our content for you, is self-respect, personal growth, self-confidence, becoming a better man, all start with ensuring that you fulfill the commitments that you make to yourself, and that's a non-negotiable. So there's going to be days where you're busy, you have stuff going on, you're tired, you're burnt out, it's hard. But if you're serious about seeing progress, if you're serious about reaching your goals, you have to push through that and make sure that you fulfill that obligation. You fulfill that commitment. And so here I am, and I'm going to teach you the exact process that I've learned and employ with everything that I do so I can create progress. The very first step to this process is we have to set a goal. One of the most important things about setting your goal, however, is it needs to be something that you can measure. One of the things that I learned very early on in business is if I don't measure something, then I don't care about its progress. And so you think about all the people that I've worked with over the years as far as their health, their fitness is concerned. None of them track their food, track their progress in the gym, take measurements, etc 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 and then when it comes time for them to feel discouraged or want to quit they don't have data to show the progress that they've made they have no idea where they started they have no idea how far they've come and the fact is they're not really able to make educated decisions on what they need to do next so that they can take things to the next level don't plan on seeing long-term progress with anything unless you measure it and so when we're setting our goals, it's important to be very specific and have tangible things that we can hold ourselves accountable to. If your goal is to lose weight, you don't just want to say, I want to lose weight. You say, I want to lose 20 pounds over the next period, X period of time. If your goal is to improve your relationship, that may mean that you have to have several thresholds or things that you measure. One goal could be, I need to spend at least 30 minutes of uninterrupted time with my wife at least three times a week. Another goal could be, I need to make sure that I go out of my way to do at least one date night per week. Or whatever those things are that you wanna do for her to improve your relationship, make sure that they're actual measurable, tangible things that you can hold yourself accountable to. In business, fitness, those are very easy. I want to make X amount of revenue within X amount of time. We want to bring in this many leads within this amount of time. We want to achieve this specific return on investment for our advertising spend over this period of time. Whatever that goal is, you need to make sure that it's very specific, it's tangible, it's measurable. Then once I have that goal, step two of this process is I make a plan. Now, the very first thing that I'm gonna tell you when it comes to making a plan is most of the time when you're setting these goals, you've never been there before. You don't know what you don't know. And the second piece is nine times out of 10, the conditions for you to step forth on this journey towards creating what you wanna create are never going to be perfect. There's always gonna be an obstacle, an excuse, a challenge, a reason to wait, 
And the longer you use that excuse to allow you to procrastinate, the more time that you're squandering. The truth is you will never have that perfect opportunity. So what you need to do is do your best to come up with a plan to the best of your knowledge and understand that this plan is not going to be set in stone. This is just a starting point. Your goal is to give yourself a destination with a rough sketch draft of how you're going to get there. We've set our goal. We have a general idea of what our plan is moving forward to get there. And you start immediately. Last thing that you want to do is set this goal, make this plan and be the type of person who sits and talks about it, but doesn't take action. You need to execute. Stop waiting around. Go. There's nothing stopping you. There's no reason to wait. Move forward. Keep moving forward. One foot in front of the other constantly. Sometimes you're going to move very fast because you're motivated and you're excited and you have all these positive emotions. And other times you're going to move really, really slow because you're depressed, you're uncertain, you have self-doubt. Regardless, always move forward. And so when you make this plan, understand that it's probably going to suck. That's okay. We're just here to give yourself a starting point so that you can start taking immediate action towards achieving what you're trying to achieve. And so I kind of touched on this third point. Once you have your plan, the goal is to stay consistent. Stay consistent. Continue to follow through. Like I told you guys tonight, it's 1130 I'm here recording this YouTube video for you guys because I made the commitment that I was going to do a daily video for you. Here I am fulfilling that commitment. How do I expect to see growth and achieve the things that I've set out to achieve if I'm not even willing to follow through on the plan that I created? In the world that we live in today, the bar is so low. There's so many people out there who are looking for the short-term gratification. They want the easiest path. They don't want to face the challenges and the hardships that come with building anything meaningful. I call it the Amazon Prime Society. If we can't have it right now, we don't want it. When it comes to building something, when it comes to creating success, when it comes to improving, you can't have that mindset. You need to be willing to delay gratification. You need to be willing to be alone. You need to be willing to be the person who people think is crazy. You have to be willing to be the person who's different. Where people look at you kind of sideways like there's something a little bit wrong with this guy. If you truly want to go off and be great, you're not going to do it by being like everyone else. The way that you're going to do it is by being different. By setting yourself apart and staying consistent and staying true to who you are, your values, living in a place of authenticity and being consistent. Live your truth and don't quit. Don't give up. Stay consistent. Stay on track. Follow through with your plan. And so when you stay consistent, that leads us to the next step, which is step four, is track your progress. Measure your results. If you're in the gym, you should be writing down or using a mobile app on how much weight you lifted, how far you ran, your weight loss progress, your body fat progress. If your goal is to lose weight and you're trying to adjust your nutrition, you should be tracking your macros and measuring your food and going through that process of learning what right looks like when it comes to eating. If you're a business owner, you should be specifically measuring the KPIs, the key performance indicators within your business that are going to give you the insight you need to measure success towards your goal. You need to track. You need to meticulously track. Be obsessed about it. I can tell you right now, since I started this YouTube journey over the last week, on my computer screen right here, YouTube is open and I see my subscribers. It's a live view. I see all of my recent videos and the number of views they've had and all that data. And I'm constantly in there analyzing, looking, watching, trying to figure out what's working, what's not working. When we track our progress and we stay consistent, It gives us an immense amount of data. So in the past, when I was doing more online fitness coaching clients, I found that one of the biggest problems we had 
with people coming in was they weren't accustomed to tracking things and they didn't stay consistent. And so I'd give them this nutrition plan, I'd give them a workout plan, and we'd load everything in the mobile app for them so that we could track that data. And then we'd make it halfway through the week and we'd look at their stuff and we could see that they weren't tracking. We're not seeing the workouts inputted, the nutrition isn't being logged, etc. So we reach out, hey, I need you to track your stuff. What's going on here? Oh, sorry, I've just been busy. I forgot. Then the weekly check-in would come around on the weekend, and sure enough, they didn't follow through. They didn't track. They missed days. They weren't consistent. And so if I don't have a clear picture on what's working, what's not working, on what's going on with your progress towards the goal that you've set, then I can't help you do step five which is optimize, learn from your mistakes. And so continuing on the fitness coaching example is interesting because most of the time, the guys who don't track and don't stay consistent are also the ones who are the first to complain about not seeing results, becoming frustrated, upset because they've invested this money or this time into this coach and they don't seem to be getting the output that they feel like they should be getting. Well, How do you expect us to get you to where you want to go if I don't know what's working and what's not working? If I don't have a clear picture on all of the variables so that we can work together to come up with a plan moving forward for the long term. One of the things that's really important about when you optimize your plan, whether this be, again, fitness, nutrition, business, whatever else that you're trying to improve in, is you only change one variable at a time, okay? So I'm gonna use nutrition as an example because it's so easy to explain and a lot of people understand it, but this applies to everything, okay? So let's say as an example, I am on a 2000 calorie meal plan. We're eating somewhere in the range of 200 grams of protein, and our goal is to ensure our goal is to lose body fat. And I'm following this workout plan. We're working out five days a week. We're doing a push pull split. And while I'm seeing progress, one of the struggles that I'm having is I'm constantly hungry. And the other problem that I'm having is that typically I crash in the afternoons around two or 3 p.m. This is something that's very common. When people get onto a nutrition plan and they start working out and training, they get tired because they're working really hard. Their food has changed, their habits are changed, and they start to become sluggish in the early afternoon, especially after they eat lunch. And so there's a couple of things that we can do. The very first thing that we can do to try to solve that problem is increase the amount of food. But one of the other things that we can do to try to solve that problem is adjust at what parts of the day they eat carbs. We don't want to do both of those things. And the reason we don't want to do both of those things is because if it works, then we don't know what the fix was. And it's super important for you as a person to be able to associate an action with an outcome. This is what gives us that dopamine that we need so that when we lack motivation or we're struggling with staying on track, we associate the action, the hard thing that we know we need to do with the positive thing that we feel or experience on the other end. And so adjusting by one variable at a time gives us the ability to not only reinforce the positive habit, but it also gives us the ability where we can continuously optimize our plan over time so that we get better and better and better. So the basic concept of this and what I've talked about is we set our goal, we make a plan, we stay consistent and on track with that plan. We track our progress, so we gather our data. And then when we have that picture, we can optimize. And so our original plan is what we call the baseline. Then when we make an adjustment, if that improves the outcome over say seven days or 30 days, then that becomes the new baseline. If it did not improve our outcome, then we go back to the original baseline and adjust a different variable. It's that simple. So I have my base. I want to achieve this. The way that I'm going to get there is by shifting one variable at a time, measuring it. Did this improve 
or make our situation worse. It improved. Okay, cool. Now we have a new base. And what happens is, is over time, you continue to do this until ultimately you get to your goal. Now, the last step of this process, and I can tell you right now, this is the hardest. Don't quit under any circumstance. Do not quit. When it gets hard, don't quit. When you're not seeing results, don't quit. When the optimizations aren't working, don't quit. When you're frustrated, don't quit. Stop quitting. So many people give up. Whenever I think about this, I always think about there's a meme that goes viral on Facebook and Instagram every once in a while, and it has two different miners. And the one on the top is halfway down this tunnel, chugging away. And then the one on the bottom shows a different guy who's all the way to the end, but he's got his head down and he's turned around and he's walking away. The part that the guy on the bottom doesn't know is he was literally this close to striking gold. Had he just gone for another 10 strikes with that pick, he would have hit the jackpot, but he never did all of the work, the time, the effort, the energy that he put in to achieve that goal went to waste. And that outcome is simply going to go to someone else, not because they're better, more competent, more talented, more capable, more intelligent, whatever the case may be, simply because they were the person that didn't quit. And so real quick, I just want to give you some staggering statistics that revolve around people who quit. 75% of podcasts become inactive after only seven episodes. In order for you to become a 1% podcaster, all you have to do is reach 21 episodes. 21 episodes recorded and published, and you have beat 99% of the people who record podcasts. And only 20% of people who start a podcast make it past the first year. Out of 37 million YouTube channels, only 0.1% of those have over 100,000 subscribers. And 90% of the people who start YouTube channels also quit within the first year. Now, what's interesting is this also applies to fitness, and this is something that's near and dear to my heart. Only 8% of people who set new year resolutions achieve their goal percent and fitness goals are the most common new year resolution fitness 50% of people quit new fitness programs within the first six months 41% of people don't complete their goals at all regardless of what that goal is and only 9.2% of people feel successful in achieving their goals I want you to understand that Literally, based upon these statistics, 90% of being successful is just staying consistent and not quitting. Show up every day. The other 10% is learning from your mistakes. And that's literally this entire process that I explained to you guys tonight. Set a goal. Make it measurable. Come up with some type of plan to get there. Take immediate action on that plan. Stay consistent with it. Track your progress towards achieving the tangible thing that you wanted to achieve. And then optimize your plan based upon the results that you see. AKA, learn from your mistakes. And don't quit. And if you can just do that, it doesn't matter what it is, how hard it is, how far away you are, how old you are. Your lack of talent, your lack of knowledge, your lack of intelligence, your lack of whatever you think, whatever limiting belief you have, is irrelevant. You will succeed eventually. Applying this strategy to the goals that you have in your life literally takes the word if out of the equation and makes achieving the goals that you have inevitable. As long as you have the perseverance, the fortitude, and the resilience to stick with it, even when you're not seeing results, even when it's hard. So check it out. If you appreciate this video, if it was useful for you, do me a favor, send it to somebody who you think it would help. And as a reminder, just like I said in this video, I've made the commitment to post a YouTube video for you daily. So make sure you tune in tomorrow for another episode. Look forward to seeing you and stay vigilant.